everybody and welcome to Josiah is Right. So I have Penny here and she has Bert because recently we went to the Jim Henson exhibit at the Skirball Museum in Los Angeles and it was just absolutely a magical experience. So I just want to share with you some of that. I've had the pleasure of partnering with one of his daughters, Heather, on my film festival in the past, which is now unfortunately behind me, uh, the film festival, Graphation, and all that. But it was an amazing experience doing that with her to connect to Jim Henson, who is just hugely significant in my creative life and is now part of my daughter's life and because of things like this. So take a look at some of the clips of the exhibits and things like that. And of course, Penny really having an amazing, amazing time. She loved it, as you'll see. So first what you see is the outside, the main entrance of the Skirball. And actually, as I post this, and this is the entrance of the exhibit, and as I post this, the exhibit has already closed. So unfortunately, I hope to get this out before that, uh, because later on, I believe, when I'm with You'll See Me and Penny again, I pretty give it a pretty ringing endorsement to go see it, but it is closed in Los Angeles, unfortunately. But here you can see the video sort of entry point, and then you walk down to the stairs and inside the exhibit. Basically, everything is in chronological order, so sort of Jim's life in order. The very first thing is kind of a greeting, sort of marquee piece here, and then you actually see the early life but Kermit the frog is kind of at the center of that so the, the sort of central figure in this is Kermit as you get a background on Jim Henson and his early years and his early work it kind of is like the it's almost like an introduction piece and then you go into that sort of back in time where it's young Jim Henson as a kid and as a young performer and it's really cool to see because you just see his genius from very early on it's just amazing the the forethinking because puppets weren't what he made them to be puppets are something different now uh, you know the happy time murders film just came out that couldn't have existed in a world before jim henson and i've heard mixed things about it but point being is he opened the door for puppets beyond just kids stuff and and, sh and while also making it okay that it's still kids stuff that's the crazy thing about it you know something like the dark crystal i grew up with it was dark and adult, but yet it was accessible to me as a kid. And Sesame Street, of course, is something I watched as a kid, watch now with my own daughter. This is one of my favorites, Rolf, the sketch there. Amazing to see just the design. You can see it had fangs, a little bit more dog-like. And then the handwritten notes on the script, that was just awesome. Just amazing stuff like that. Those little details, like the things that make it more human. And then, of course, the puppets. That was... I almost want to say that's my favorite, but I'm going to say that 50 million times if I do say that. And also you'll see here Timepiece, which is Jim Henson's famous sort of live action and experimental work. I think this was considered the, yeah, the experimental section, but it's uh, something that I'd heard about as a kid, but still haven't seen. I heard they were doing an adaptation of it with uh, Archaea Studios or something, a comic book company, I can't really recall. You can see this light, this flashing bit right before you enter Sesame Street, part of that experimental section. Penny loved it. Every kid loved it. And here is one of the many highlights, Sesame Street. This is probably the highlight as a family, I would say, and the, the experience of it, this was certainly a highlight. In a little bit here, you'll see Penny interacting. So the Bert and Ernie puppet. The Ernie puppet right there is from the 1980s. The Bert, I believe, is from the 70s. It had on the markers there. But, and there you see Penny pointing at Jim Henson because Jim Henson is holding Ernie. I, I nearly cried as I was filming that because she just spontaneously did that. She was in the stroller at the beginning and then wanted out because, of course, there's Muppets everywhere. And she knows Sesame Street. She loves Ernie. Ernie's probably her second favorite character after Elmo. And she took right to him. And she, of course, Bert as well. Ernie has to be with Bert when you think about it. But it was just amazing to see the real tangible artifacts from my childhood that I watched specifically in the Ernie you see here it says in the the 80s and the 70s yeah so Ernie from the 80s and those things were what I watched and grew up with and now Penny is growing up with the same characters and even some of the same clips because we can watch old Sesame Street Snipe the YouTube things like that HBO has a big backlog of the old stuff too and it's just really cool to see the stuff that I actually grew up watching like the exact stuff I grew up watching there is Slimy in his circus big fan of Slimy Penny is and am I and then you can see sort of the Sesame Street toy style stuff Grover of course 
uh, not necessarily my favorite now as an adult as I watch him, but as a kid he was much more uh, appealing to me. But it's it's strange how I still love Ernie best, but uh, it's it's how it changed. And here you can see the Muppet Show, sort of that transition into more adult fare, right? Where it's still kid accessible. I remember watching a lot of it as a kid. Uh, it was on the Sci-Fi Channel for me as a kid, so it was in reruns at that point more than probably you know, 10 years after its run, plus a few years, at least 10 years, uh, probably in the early 90s when I was watching it. And you can just see all the work that went into making that and taking puppetry and elevating it to something that you could watch as a family. And that's what the Muppets were and are, I think, at their best. Even, you know, the uh, recent Muppet films, the first of them, the Jason Siegel one, capture that. And I love seeing these note cards because I do this a lot when I write, obviously, to sort of organize scenes, particularly in screenwriting, it really helps because it's very much built on structure, whereas with the novel, you have space to play. And you can see here the Jim Henson and the guys as playing, and then there are the puppets right there. There was a lot of cool little features like that, too, where the clips and things would have, then you could actually see the puppet. Unfortunately, there's I didn't get to read everything. I'd love to go back, which is not going to happen now, and just read every single thing. Part of it, I was trying to wrangle Penny while get some good shots here. Here you see that Muppet like stage marquee that was famous from the show. Penny, you'll see just a few seconds of this here, but Penny spent a lot, a lot of time running around in it. And again, another video exhibit, you can just see all the different clips of the Muppets from the Muppet Show. And this is kind of, in the, within the exhibit itself, this is the transition from television to film, which is really what's happening. The Muppets at that time, as the show was on, were transitioning themselves from television to film. So that's kind of what this next section captures. This portion was just really cool to see. And in a little bit, you'll see Penny enjoying it. And also, I started a Penny uh, Rides YouTube channel for our Disneyland stuff, and I'll actually post longer uncut versions of this there so look up penny rides if you're interested in seeing a bit more of this this video total runs probably about 12 minutes that video total without any of my introductions or voiceover or anything is probably closer to 20 so check that out here was really cool penny hasn't really seen much of kermit but there she points out kermit she dances she runs over points out kermit again she dances she kept pointing to kermit which was really really cool because I don't know that we've seen anything other than maybe some old Sesame Street, like some uh, of the retro stuff, the, the, the classics of Sesame Street with when, before the Disney split, when you could still see Kermit as a part of Sesame Street when he was the newscaster. Again, just uh, how things have changed, right? With thanks to Disney. But that was just really cool because Penny gravitated towards Kermit. Now... I've probably almost said it or have said it, well, oh, this is my favorite thing. But this would be certainly my favorite thing, because The Dark Crystal is one of my absolute favorite films, regardless of genre, and probably my favorite puppet film, certainly. So it was really cool to see the Gelflings there, a little bit scary, and also to see, in a little bit, you'll see the concept art and things like that, but just the Skeksis, oh, so scary. Uh, it's, it's, and it's quite big, the, <laughs> the... The puppet, it's basically, you know, a person would be hunched over in that. And again, uh, Fraggle Rock, another favorite of mine, which we were able to share with Penny, thanks to a recent uh, free HBO trial, which we don't have currently, but I'm very tempted just because of Fraggle Rock. Sure, Game of Thrones, but Fraggle Rock, come on. But anyway, they had just a few puppets. They didn't have Gobo, unfortunately, it was my favorite, and I think a lot of people would say that, but it was cool to see red and I'm drawing a blank on the other guy so there goes my Fraggle Rock credibility but it was just cool to see um, I grew up with that the Gelflings here you can see the faces I assume it's the original faces and with some deterioration but here's the concept art because they did a comic book of this which used that style which is really cool to see it was like a sequel and it's set you know a hundred years or something after they've supposedly healed the world and now things are kind of bad again because they've become complacent here you can see some more artifacts from the Dark Crystal. And we'll get a little bit of Labyrinth in a second here. Um, first, I believe, yeah, here's a clip of the Dark Crystal. So you can just see, it was cool. Every, pretty much every exhibit showed you something in action. And these ones in particular, 
kind of up the scale so you have a big projection of the Gelfling and of, of the Dark Crystal and different clips were shown to show you what it's like and really bring it to life and there's some Dark Crystal books in different languages and as a collector I want to break that cabinet open of course I want to break everyone open because I'm apparently a master thief and just as we wrap things up here you can see Jim Henson just it shows you the man behind pretty much all of that not alone certainly but significant in the little puppet theater for kids and finally they had a screening room we didn't go to any of the screenings or anything it just didn't work our schedule but they had some cool things i saw something with brian henson a lot of other puppeteers and a lot of other special things so it was really cool to see would love to have a chance to go check out a screening sometimes or another exhibit depending on what it is but didn't get to and here we finally have penny with the Bert she picked herself out of a lineup of potentials. She had a Gobo, so Gobo is my souvenir from it, even though she obviously plays with it. And in front of the picture of Jim Henson. So we want to thank everyone who put this together, and of course Jim Henson for his inspiration. So that was the Jim Henson exhibit at the Skirball. It was an amazing experience. So one thing I wanted to share is that Penny bought this at the Skirball. So this was her souvenir picked out. Um, her uncle Jerry bought her a Ernie and an Elmo, which are her two favorite characters. And so at the Skirball, we lined up a row of characters, including Bert here, and had her pick. And she could have picked Cookie Monster. She didn't. She picked Bert. And since she did pick Bert, I had to get myself one as well. And I picked Gobo. So for me, it was Gobo, Fraggle Rock. Uh, it was just awesome to see. The Dark Crystal stuff was really special as well for me. It was all special. Really, it was. The Ernie they had was the Ernie that I saw as a kid, that Jim Henson used when I was a kid watching that show. So that is it. These are our new friends. Thank you for your legacy of creativity, Jim Henson, the inspiration that continues from me, from to my daughter, and, and it'll continue to her children. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And go see this exhibit if you're in LA. And if it comes to you, when it comes to you, go see it. It's amazing. I nearly cried at moments when I saw Penny running around the place. I'm nearly crying now thinking about it. It was really special. So can you say bye, Penny? Say bye and thanks everybody for watching. Bye, everybody.